Welcome to Boys, episode 73. Back again on a Sunday. We're going to get to the show here in just a moment. But first, a little business. First of all, thank you for listening. Thank you for going to boyspodcast.com, a hub of all things boys. There you will find links to our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and more. Visit boyspodcast.com weekly for a brand new episode. Boys Podcast is available on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud. Rate, review, subscribe, tell a friend. I don't know who that was supposed to be. Jesse Ventura, kind of. <laughs> yeah. His I was, brother. I was going for something. Eddie Ventura. Work. Eddie Ventura, pet detective? Yes. <laughs> Ed Ventura. <laughs> email us at boys at boyspodcast.com. We're trying a new promotion here. You email us with a question, comment, concern, criticism, any kind of feedback. Mm-hmm. Dick pics. No. Okay. Maybe. We'll leave it up to you. If if dicks are boobs. <laughs> if if dicks are boobs. Oh, I love that band. Uh, put your physical address in the email. We'll send you out some stickers as a way of saying thank you for listening and for giving us some feedback. Some crucial, crucial feedback because that's what we run on here. It is what we run on here. We also run on Anthem Brewing. Mm. Delicious beers. I've had about 17 today. That's a lot of beers. <laughs> you drunk? Be right back. I got a piss. <laughs> Anthembrewing.com. It'll make you piss. Fat Bison. Fatbison.com. Good wood. The dude makes... The dude. He makes wood signs. The dude. <laughs> the dude badge. That's not good. That wasn't good at all. I always <laughs> want to do a good Sam Elliott, but it never, it never works. Fat I, I, I got it. Okay. <laughs> That's it, right? Fatbison.com. All right. And then... Last, last but not least, OKC Comedy. OKCComedy.com. Proud to be a partner with them. Friday, October 27th, they're bringing in Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Come see him. It's going to be a good show. You can find out more at OKCComedy.com. Also, I was on OKCComedy.com the other day. You know what I noticed? What's that? They have some brand new merchandise. It's a new merch? They got some new merch. So if you're a fan of comedy, if you're a fan of the laughs, if you're a fan of people bringing in comedy for Uh you to laugh at, Mm -hmm. check out OKCComedy.com. Grab you a shirt. Grab you something. Grab a laugh. Grab a ticket. Grab a laugh. (laughs) Get a life and grab a laugh at okccomedy.com. Lastly, thank you for the donations, the tweets, comments, all of it. It, Everything you guys have been doing on social media, loving it. Love it. Loving it. We love that you listen. It means the world to us. We'll keep doing this as long as you keep listening Mm -hmm. and telling a friend, like you said at the beginning there, Josh, the most important thing you could do. Yeah. We have a donate button on our website. Mm -hmm. If you want to throw us a few bucks, that's cool. The best thing you can do is listen and tell somebody. If you like it, you enjoy it, tell a friend. They're going to tell a friend. We're going to explode. One of these days. Yeah. It's coming. If you got a favorite app. I feel it. Share your favorite app. Yeah. This might be your favorite app. It may not. It may not. It gets a little deep. Yeah. We got a little deep towards the end. We're doing this intro actually right after we recorded the episode. Mm-hmm. We get a little existential towards the end. Yeah. So Some if musings. You, if you want to if you want to get uh, centered, probably not even centered. If you want to get in that mindset, dive in. Yeah. I hope this episode brings you joy. We will be the transmitters of that joy. You'll be the receivers of that joy. And until next time we do an intro after, here's episode 73 of Boys Podcast. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America And for the republic for which we stand One nation under God It's a great chord to end it on there (laughs) Welcome to Boys Episode 73 I'm Robbie I'm Josh And we are here again on a Sunday I got one. I had one. I got one. I had one. Hold on. Uh, uh, another pleasant valley is Sunday. Hey, who sings that? The Monkees, dude. The best rock and roll band of all time. The Monkees. Yeah. The mo- Let me set the record straight. The Monkees. Let me have mm-hmm. you help me set the record straight. Okay. The Monkees were purely a novelty act. Yes. But they knew how to play their instruments. Kind of. So, okay. Let, they, lay it on me. Okay. Back in like, I don't remember the date, 60, probably after the, the Beatles boom, 60, probably saying 66, 67, they did a, uh, an open casting call 
I thought you were going to say an open casket. An open casket. Paul was dead. For rock and roll. Paul was dead. <laughs> hey, man, it was an open casket for rock and roll in 76. Paul was laying in the coffin. Yeah. Had to prove it was him. Because he was dead. He's the walrus. He is the walrus. Goo 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 Dead. Dead. So they do this open casting call. They wanted musicians and actors alike to come. Um, so, you know, Davy Jones was an actor, but also could sing. Uh, Peter Tork was a musician, well-rounded musician. <laughs> Tork. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can I do a quick aside here? Sure. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I appreciate you. Torque. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what What is torque? Uh, torque is drip on your pants. Yes. From, from not shaking it properly. Right. Growing up, hearing that in like junior high for the first <laughs> time, torque. Now, how is that spelled? Is it T-O-R-K? I think or is it T-O-U-R... Wait, like, like torque on a wrench? T-O-R-Q-U-E? <laughs> yeah. Or T-O-U-R-Q-U-E? Yeah. I, I never... Because I never you never wrote it out. You just said, oh, torque. Yeah. And you got a little torque on your pants, yeah. which is funny. I'm going to say T O R K is how the drippage is spelled. Also, how Peter spelled his last name. Also, and, how. But his name is Peter Torque. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, man. I just had a breakthrough. I just had a real. I had a monkey breakthrough. <laughs> Peter Torque. I laughed at the word torque. Right. Not paying any attention. To his first name. Being the thing that is doing the dripping. The, the torquing. The torquing. <laughs> Peter Tork? <laughs> yeah. But he was good. Next time I see piss yeah. on your pants, I'm going <laughs> to point. Peter <laughs> Tork. I'd be like, hey, man, Peter Tork. Okay, yeah. go on. Okay, so Mike Nesmith was also a musician. Uh, if you haven't heard his music, you should listen to it. On All Spotify. right, Michael Nesmith. And then uh, Davy Jones. And then, uh, oh, the other guy. He was my favorite. The drummer who didn't really know how to Mickey. play drums. Mickey Dolans. Okay. Okay. So Mickey and uh, Davey were actors, and these other two were musicians. They got them together, and there was a big to-do because Peter and Mike wanted to like write their own songs. They wanted to take it more serious than being yeah. just on a TV show? Did you not show? watch that Monkeys? There's a, there's a Monkeys... Head? No, there's a... Well, it's like a... Uh, well, now they call them biopics. Oh. But back mm, in the day, like fancy. the late 90s, they had they did one for the Monkeys, and it was like pretty spot on, pretty good. Okay. Pretty good. All right, check it out. So, two of the fellows wanted to be more. Yeah, they than wanted just TV. Yeah, actors. they wanted they wanted to be a band, and they did tour. They did live shows. Apparently, they weren't that great. I want to see some monkeys footage but on I, YouTube. I'm a monkeys apologist. I like the I love the monkeys. I love the monkeys. <laughs> you do you really I, do? Yeah, I'm a big fan. So you do you think what do you what do you view them as? Do you view them as a band or do you view them as as actors? I, I mean, it's a novelty act, you know, I don't view them as a band band, right. but the songs that were written, there was a, t- a team of uh, songwriters, uh, the main one being Neil Diamond, the Rope the, for the Monkeys, the name of names, most of all the older, older, most of the monkey songs were written by Neil Diamond, which is why they kind of have that Neil Diamond kind of vibe. Uh, okay. Yeah. All like right. Daydream Believer was originally a Neil Diamond song. It's a good song. But they, they, yeah. was that the monkeys' song? Yeah, that was like their that was their hit. That was their big but hit. You had, you had Pleasant Valley Sunday. You had uh, Daydream Believer. Mm-hmm. You had I'm a Believer. Oh, that was another good one. And then uh, my favorite was Auntie Griselda. Okay, I don't know was, if I know that. It's just a fuzzy kind of a guitar lead. Can we play like, some of that right now? Yeah. She knows her mind all right, your Auntie Griselda. She says she knows my kind. She might maybe so. Great song. Yeah. Oh, it's just a weird, it. yeah, weird vibe. Yeah. How do we get talking about the monkeys? Oh, because I started singing. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of monkeys, mm-hmm. or uh, bands, excuse monkeys, me. Monkeys, Torque, Peter Torque, a name for your dick is your monkey. Neil Dude. Diamond. Neil, Neil Down, <laughs> Neil? like Neil Down. <laughs> Peter Torque. <laughs> there's also, I believe there's like a bathroom uh, na- napkin dispensary. What are those called? Paper towel dispenser? That, a napkin dispensary. <laughs> I need to go to Target. I can pick up a napkin dispensary. There's a paper towel dispenser sure. brand mm-hmm. called Torque. Yeah. I'm pretty sure yeah. because I always get a laugh out of that when I'm holding my dong, taking a piss at Gaiudi's. Mm-hmm. I see Torque. <laughs> Torque. And uh, yeah, I get a little chuckle. I love that. I well, love little. But, hold on. Wait. It, that, it bleeds into that. We'll get to what you were about to say. Torque being the drip. What do you clean your drip up with? A paper towel. A paper towel dispenser's called Torque. It's a conspiracy. It's, it's, we're coming full yeah. circle here. But you love what now? I just love little things like that. I love little laughs, little things that brighten my day. 
I feel like I had a, I had a moment that I feel like brightened possibly brighten people's day yesterday Unex- unexpected joy just yeah <laughs> unexpected joy mm-hmm. i love that i had a mo- i put out a i put out a moment like that yesterday mm-hmm. i wasn't on the receiving end yeah i put one out you put a little put a little love out there did you see uh listen to this you hear that that's the sound of a fidget spinner spinning that was the little bit of joy i think i put out yesterday mm-hmm did you see my fidget spinner I video? I did. It was very nice. Scorsese ain't got nothing on me. I thought that could have been the film of the year. Was it slow? It was slow mo. Yes. Okay. <laughs> because it was like, whoosh, 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 whoosh. it was really calming the sound of it. Unlike this. Now that sounds like a shitty fan, like a shitty box fan. <laughs> These little grease. Anyways, <laughs> I put a little, I felt like I put a little joy out yesterday because that video happened on accident and I was like, I was debating whether to put it on Instagram mm-hmm. or not because I was like, I don't know. It's kind of silly. You know, this whole fidget spinner thing's like way played out. So it's like, maybe, maybe I'll just keep that for me, for yeah. my joy. Mm-hmm. But I felt like I, I was like, I got, I owe it to the people. Yeah. I owe it to my friends Yeah, to put it out. And I got some good comments. People, LOLs, um, some crying, smiling emojis were sent my way. Yeah. Uh, I like to, I like to be the transmitter of the joy not always just the receiver so that's good yeah speaking of joy had a little joy yourself at riot fest i had a i had i had some joy joyous moments joyous occasions but we talk like you and i you know we see each other every day we work Mm -hmm. together we play together we do this some might say er day er day Mm -hmm. so but i've been but i've been waiting to ask you about the trip until you got back on the show because i wanted to because you want that shit on on mic i wanted to to share it Yeah, yeah uh well me and my wife my wife and i uh, who, mind you, are 35 years old, uh, hopped on a plane, went to Chicago for a little thing called Riot Fest, three-day music festival, where the gates open at 11, ends at 10. Do the math. That's a long fucking day. Doing that three days in a row. My Priceless. God. My God. Yeah. But we went because, you know, Jawbreaker announced the reunion shows they're going to play at Riot Fest. That's like the main reason to buy tickets. Of course. Then you start seeing the rest of the lineup. Like, okay, fine. We'll just get three-day passes. So you just went all in. You just, just got the three day. Jumped all in. All right. This was a weird trip because we there's a lot of firsts. Never been to Chicago. One. Two. Uh, flew on an airline I've never been on before. A little airline called Spirit Air. I was curious about that. It's a bit. It was an experience, man. Here's the thing. $41 for a one-way ticket. You really can't beat that price. However, once you get on the plane, you realize, yes, I can. What kind of plane are we talking? Okay, look. Let's start at the beginning here. What has two wings? On two. Each side. Okay, that's good. Uh-huh. I thought they just had one. It's got a rudder. It just flies it in circles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The rudder is and the, the back. back yeah, the it's, vert- it's got it's, one of those. It's the shark wing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it's a, it's a normal size plane, but how they sell their tickets so cheaply, inexpensively, I'll say. Okay. Uh, is that they put the seats closer together? Okay. So you have like zero, like minimal amount of leg room and your seat does not recline at all okay and you're just uh, in b- just bare bones so when you sit you know you sit you've been on a plane before yeah so you're sitting in your seat and then in front of you you can see the cush the back cushion of the thing and there's like a uh, thing that's got like magazines and what have you in it right and then your tray table is the width of that entire back seat or right. back of the seat all right so in spirit you don't get any of that shit. It, it concaves into like what the seat actually, the back is of the actual seat. Uh huh. So you're seeing like the guts. Right. And then where your magazines, which there isn't one, it's just your in flight. If you get in a crash, here's what you do. No magazines? No. And it's, it, they basically use like those bungee cords, those cheap shitty bungee cords that like three of them that hold it in. Your tray table is literally the size of like, it's that big. What would you say that is? Like a, like That's a like, book. It's like the size yeah, of a the book size turned of a sideways. trade paperback. Turned sideways. Okay. Wow. That's your tray table. What are you supposed to put on that little table? And they skimp. You, you know what you can't fit on there? You can fit a cup and then your mixer, which is what I fit on my tray table. A cup. I got a gin and tonic. Okay. My cup and my tonic water. Because they. what was weird is they give you a full thing of tonic. It's, it's not a little guy. Uh-huh. It's a big thing of tonic water. Little tables, big tonics. Big tonics. Spirit Airlines. Yeah, but I mean... For 40 bucks, I guess, whatever. Um, you know, flew there, got there, hung out. I went to the, found it, so there's some Airbnb debacle. Uh, it wasn't the address. Have you ever done an Airbnb before? 
Yes. Okay. So, you know, when you book it, when it gets closer to the date, they give you the address, mm-hmm. how to get there, all that kind of Where shit. Where the key is. Where the key is. Mm-hmm. All that good noise. So I get to Chicago and I get dropped off right in front of where the address of the Airbnb says. Get there. I call the guy. I'm like, hey, I'm here. It's, it's like, oh, okay, cool. I'm outside. I'm like, there's no one outside. I'm like, I'm at blah, blah, blah address. Like, well, that's not the right address. I'm at this address. And I immediately get sketched out. Like, yeah, it sounds a little sketchy. You're out of town. Mm-hmm. You're not on your home turf. He's like, no, get in, get in an Uber. Drive two miles down the street and you'll find me there. He didn't say it like that. <laughs> so I wouldn't get, have gotten the Uber. So I was the whole time I was like super sketched. We get there and it's like this swank ass apartment complex. Really nice apartment. It was sweet. Super sweet. Turns out right around the corner is the Green Mill, which is a bar, a lounge. Uh, plays a lot of swing music from back in the day. Originals. Okay. You know, Cherry Pop and Daddy's, that kind of shit. Oh yeah, the real shit. Yeah, the real the, shit. The good shit. <laughs> the good shit. Yeah. The W's. Yeah. No, so we went there, had a beverage. It was nice. And then uh, there was festival again all day. First day we do, we plan it out. You, you plan out as an old person. You, you make a schedule. Well, this is new for me. Festivals nowadays have apps. Yeah. Where you can like schedule on the app. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. genius. And, it, and then it gives you alerts. Like so-and-so is playing the blah, blah, blah stage in 15 minutes. So you have to allow that app yeah. to send you notifications. Sure. And then it tells you, hey... You know, the hippos are playing on, on stage D at four o'clock. But here's the thing. The hippos. Something on Planet Dad, something Dad doesn't do. He doesn't turn on notifications. Cause no. you know why? Why? That's, how, that's, a, that's another way they get you. Turning off your notifications is anti-dad. Wait, no, it is. Wait, wait, I'm confused. I don't have my notifications on. Yeah. So is that dad? Because I'm like, you know what? I'll see it when I see it. Yeah. It'll be there. Or is it more dad or is it mom to leave your notifications on because you don't know how to turn them off? Mo- yeah. And every five seconds, she's like, bing, 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 bing. Like, mom, turn your shit off. I think when it comes to our phones, yeah. I'm the dad and you're the mom. Yeah. I think, I mean, that's I just, pretty I never much turn it. mine off. So it's like, it's just going off like crazy, all these bands playing. And then we get not even halfway through the day. It's like 3.30. Day one. Day one. Okay. And we're standing by a tree watching a band. And because uh, it's shaded because we're old, <laughs> like, but the average age there, I'm going to say is like probably 30. So it's a lot of older folks. Yeah, it's a it's a slightly older demographic yeah, than it's you might that, think. I made a joke today. I was like, it's like Warp Tour for grownups. Warp Tour for dads and moms. Warp Tour for dads. Yeah. And like, I look at her. I'm like, I'm already tired. <laughs> She's like, yeah, I know. I was like, we could just leave and go back to the Airbnb to take a nap. Shower. Get ready for the show tonight because we got tickets for an after show. Cab Jazz was playing an after show. So we do that. We totally dad out, literally dad out, run into a dad, friend of ours, Ryan Costello. He brought his son, which I thought was really cool. Literally being a dad at that moment. Yeah. He's being a dad. No, but he's going, he's going into the festivals. We're leaving. Right. But he's being a dad because his son's with him. Yeah. He's literally <laughs> being a dad. Just, I'm dadding right now. I don't know. And I, and I use that word. Uh, we're just dadding out right now. And he, he looked at me like, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, how dare you insult my exactly. people? I didn't, I didn't realize like, oh, that's like making a fat joke in front of a fat person. Dad shaming? I, I was dad shaming in Are that we moment. the transmitters of dad shaming? Not at all. I love dad. I was just talking about being the transmitter of joy. Yeah. Who knew I was in a hate group? Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> I fucking hate dad. Add another one to the list. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it was basically that for three days. And then you get to see, you know, Jawbreaker. At yeah. the drive-in. I've been, I've never seen at the drive-in. You introduced me at the drive-in. We were, I think you had just, actually, I think I just cracked. Because the album came out in like 99, 2000, right? Somewhere around there. You know what? Mm-hmm. I fucking streamied your ass back then mm-hmm. because we would watch that David Letterman performance mm. of at the drive-in. And I had that shit taped off of the TV on a VHS. This yeah. was before YouTube was I think that big. Was, that was the first streaming was the at the drive-in performance. That and we would watch the one-arm scissor, scissor video like. All the time. Yeah, I had them both on VHS, and I was streaming fools. You can move that if you want. I, uh, I was streaming fools since well, before and, YouTube. When they canceled, they, they were going to play a show here, and they totally canceled it, and you were bummed as fuck. Rightly so. And then, uh, so when I was watching play, I was like, man, Rob would be so pissed. I was very bummed they canceled here. I bought my ticket the moment they went on sale. Mm-hmm. In fact, I believe I pre-ordered like a pre-sale thing. Oh, that's a fan. I wanted to go so bad. Yeah. I love at the drive-in. I love the Mars Volta. 
I've seen them a few times. I wanted to see at the driving because I never got to see them back in the day. Mm-hmm. And yeah, when they canceled, I was fucking heartbroken. Yeah, I got my refund back. That's all fine sure. and good. But, you, but I was heartbroken. Doesn't give you Cedric jump around on stage acting all crazy like it doesn't. And it, he was. And was I awesome. wanted to ask you about that because, mm-hmm. you know, I'm not as into the punk rock. Mm-hmm. That was like the band I would want to see there. Yeah, that was like for me. That would have been like the band I would have tried to get up front for, or like close. You know, yeah, not, was, not be a dad. Wait a minute. At this festival, mm-hmm. was there like no one standing in front, and then like everybody kind of in the back oh, holding a beer? <laughs> here's the beauty of these festivals: um, they have a wine booth. That's how it's made for old people. There's wine. You can have just wine. I want a little hot summer wine. Mm, can I get a? Can I get a Cabernet, please? It sounds really good in this 96 degree Chicago heat. Surround. I can't even talk. Surrounded by people wearing black. Yeah, leather. I saw a lot of leather jackets. A lot of jeans. I saw there was one girl. Every she was present all three days. She we called her the goth, like just the goth, because she was flowy dressed, giant Doc Martin boots, all arms covered in like uh, uh just uh, not like I don't know, but no no skin was okay. showing. Right. She had like a mask on, giant sunglasses, and then like. A giant, like a Corey Feldman esque hood. Okay, before you brought Corey mm-hmm. into the mix, that sounded fucking hot. But you didn't get to see her face. That's hot. Yeah, it was like a, it was a goth burka. It was pretty much, a, is that what those are called? Burka. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was like that, and she had like a black umbrella, obviously, with like shit hanging off of it. Okay, now we're getting into like Tim Burton territory. She was, and then oh, oh, first day we also was saw, it extra, as the kids say. It was a little extra. <laughs> there was a couple as we were leaving. There was a couple. And my, me and my wife had a, a conversation about this on the way back to the Airbnb. The girl was, they were both painted head to toe, like fully covered. She was all red. She had those little really like authentic looking horns coming out of her forehead. Authentic. Authent- those real authentic uh, horns. Limited edition. Contacts to make her eyes look demonic. Fangs. And like she was scan- super scantily clad. So she looked like she was a demon. She had like a demon tail that looked really neat. Uh-huh. And then he was another kind of demon. He was black and like charcoal gray. Same kind of thing. They went all out. And mind you, this was probably around four o'clock in the afternoon. Nine Inch Nails were playing that night. Dang. So we I looked at her and like they were in line to get wristbands. Like A demon needs a wristband. <laughs> I got to get that $9 beer. <laughs> so we're like... That takes, that's a dedication in a couple that, you know, I mean, you can make fun of that all you want, but like, that's true love. Right. Where like, you're going to put on her makeup for, like, you're going to help each other because you can't put red paint on your back. No. You look like Tobias. Yeah. And in that moment, I was kind of, I wasn't envious. I was like, man, that's love. Like you said, unexpected joy. I got a little bit of unexpected joy out of that just to know. I mean, that's, that's, that's love. Yeah. You were the receiver. Some These joy. demons were the transmitters. <laughs> the demons were the transmitters. Would you say that this is cosplay? I would think so. Or was it like art? Or was it like punk? Or was it or like... Is that what they do when they go to shows? Because I also saw a lot of... I mean, when you go to a festival, you're going to see a lot of last minute mohawks. <laughs> a lot. Of, yeah. I just shaved it and I just dyed it. And I, you can tell because it's kind of the color's kind of dripping. Yeah. And my, my scalp is like, you can see the blue veins in the side of my head because my head hasn't seen sun since yeah. I was a kid. Yeah. And Ugh, I'm like, I hate freshly shorn heads. And then I like hate a, them. around like six o'clock, the mohawks start flopping over because they don't know how to make them properly. <laughs> posers. Posers. A lot of posers. Last minute mohawks. <laughs> yeah. A lot of LMMs. But yeah, it was good. But, uh, so saw a lot of good bands that I wanted to see. To wrap up, the, at the drive-in, did the yeah. ki- the question I wanted to ask? Did the kids still have it? Fuck yeah, they were had they good? It. Yeah, well, okay. I know Cedric can't hit all those high notes that he used to. No, but was there would, some of the putting the mic out in the he crowd? He would do that. Well, he'd throw the mic up a lot, like mid singing. Mm-hmm. So to go back to dad, we stood in the back, had the conversation earlier in the day of okay, well, we had to camp out because we know they're going to play. Like okay, well, a lot of people are going to come out. We wanted to stand up front. And it started getting really packed, so we moved back and moved further and further back until we're basically, I don't know, 20, 30 yards away from the actual mixing booth. Okay. So we're kind of way in the back. But you can see they have, like, big prompters and stuff. And uh, standing back, hold the beer to the chest, like, yeah, yes, yeah, cool. But, yeah, they came out and, like, they opened up with, um, oh, fuck, what is that? I can't remember. Uh, okay, I know what song you're talking about. I'm also right up yeah, the first song off of uh, yeah. Relationship. And like they all just went fucking. Well, the bass player just did his little bass player thing, but like 
Omar is that mm-hmm. his name? and Cedric just started going fucking ape shit. I was like, all right. Awesome. Because I was worried it was going to be boring. You know, they're yeah. old. Yeah, they're older. They're older. But it was great. I didn't know if they'd still have the the ferocious intensity it was, of the of their younger days. It was really, really good. They had kind awesome. of a light thing going on with it as well. It was, it was nice. It was entertaining. So what was your highlight? Captain Jazz. A band, I've never heard of this band before I saw you guys posting about it. So. A band I was excited to see on the roster. Like, oh, that'd be cool to see them. And then, you know, they, they post these after shows. Every night they'll do like two of the bands from Riot Fest will do like a after show at like a small club. Every other show sold out immediately. Captain Jazz had tickets left, so we got that. Like, this would be neat. Something to do. Mm-hmm. So we go to the show, and again, opens up, fucking bam. They're just going crazy. Well, you know, Tim Kinsella is going crazy. I've never seen Captain Jazz. He only put out one album in, like, 1998. Uh, and I only heard it through Chris Marvin, who went, who met us down. He's from Kenosha. He drove down an hour to come with us to the Captain Jazz show. Nice. So, yeah, crazy fucking set. We're all three of us left going fuck that was like it renewed it renewed um cr- a creative spirit you know yeah it made me like fuck man i just want to make stuff fuck like touring and doing like i just want to have fun because that's the whole point of it it's just to have a good time because um i mean i'm sure you saw like the videos of him just like jumping to the crowd every five seconds yeah it was it was awesome i really liked his crowd control the way he i don't know it was, it was just great and then they played another because we were going to watch that and be like, OK, so now we can go see Built to Spill because they were playing at the same time on Sunday. Mm-hmm. But we decided, no, that show is fucking amazing. I want to see what he does at a giant festival level and blew my fucking mind. Jawbreaker is great, but Captain Jazz stole the show. Unexpected Joy wasn't expecting to be that into that. That's great. And I've, I've been nonstop playing that fucking Captain Jazz record since I came back. Nice. It's such a good feeling to... To, to discover something for mm-hmm. yourself. I, I've done that recently. Like I've discovered something that I didn't know I would like so much. Mm-hmm. And then I just really, really, really like can't get enough of it. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's, that's a great, great feeling. Mm-hmm. It like stays with you. Yeah. You know, for so long. Uh, so w- was that the second day or was that the third day? The, uh, third good, day. good band. Good band. Uh, the Captain Jazz after show was the first night. So it was on oh, Friday. Okay. okay. And they didn't. They played the festival on Sunday, so we were just like riding high on that. Holy fuck! That Captain Jazz show was great. Like, hoping that something would top it. At the drive-in was the next night. It, was, it got close. Mm-hmm. And then you know, Jawbreaker was close. Uh, Dinosaur Junior was tight. That okay? That I want to talk about that dog. Do you remember the band That Dog? Kind of. Uh, Rachel Duncan introduced them to yes. me in high school. And they're kind of a Letters to Cleo ish kind of a band. And they hadn't played together in like 20 years. And it was the most, it was sweet. It was very sweet because they're all older. Mm-hmm. Uh, the singer like was such a babe back in the day. She still is, but she's like older babe. Okay. Like mom babe. Long hair. Like she used to have like that short spiky kind of hair. As was the style back yeah, then. Yeah. And now yeah. she's got just mom hair. Wearing, all right. Wearing a mom shirt. Just a mom shirt. Did it say mom? Did it say the word mom no, it on was, it? No, it, it stopped like at the waist, but it was kind of jarity, you know, and it was kind of ribbed. No one knows what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I know. It's an ill-fitting shirt. An ill-fitting shirt. Okay, okay. And she just, her, her, her stage banter was just really sweet. She would talk about the songs and be like, no, okay, it's fine. We'll talk about it later. And she'd play her set and they, that album is like over an hour and a half long. What? So they gave them like a big set to play. Uh-huh. It was just, it was cute. It was good. And it changed the vibe of the day because, you know, you're like loud ass punk rock music and then that dog and everyone was fucking into it. And kind of like, let's do a little reset, guys. Yeah, it's like a little reprieve yeah. from the chaos of punk rock yeah. music. That's, that's where you pop open that white wine. Yes. Maybe smoke a joint while you're like watching that dog. Wine o'clock. Pop in the, mm-hmm. what, would you pop the top of a wine? We did have to pop the top of these. It was really? A, it, have you ever seen those ones at the liquor store? It's like a ball? Yes. Okay, so it was a... Buzz com- balls. Buzz balls. It was kind of like that, but it's a company... I think they're based in Chicago, but they're stackable. Okay. They're called Electric Sky Wine. Okay. And yeah, so you can like... Like six, I think, they consider a bottle and that's 30 bucks, but that's a lot. Yeah, that's Three. a lot of wine. That's a lot of outdoor wine. Yeah. That's a lot of punk wine. We we got a Pinot Grigio and we drank it and it we you got nice and toasty, but when you're an outdoor festival, yeah. wine drunk is not the kind of drunk you want to be. 
I just I just don't see the connection. Like if I'm at if I'm at a riot fest, mm -hmm. you know, I'm thinking like a cold beer, cold and like, PBR, yeah, yeah, making me have to piss in five minutes. Mm -hmm. Like I'm gonna miss half this set because I'm drinking all this cold beer. Yeah, cold beer. I gotta <laughs> piss. Let's drink some. I don't. <laughs> not wine though, right? Like no, not like because when I drink wine, mm -hmm. I get very warm mm -hmm. and jovial. Yeah, and just like cherry, like a mm -hmm. cherry cheeked idiot. Yeah, you know, like but I want to hug it. people. Yeah. Were, were you wine drunk at Riot Fest? I was Pinot Gris tipsy. All right. During that dog. I can't remember who played after that. So then we, yeah, we decided to go after that. Let's go get some food. We got to get some food. We did that. Oh, I got these um, CBD lollipops. Uh-huh. I love that. Good stuff. It's great stuff. Hey, try some CBD. <laughs> it did. Because I was getting like crowd anxiety because uh, there was a shit ton of people. That's like, what I was going to ask. How Like crazy packed it was an overwhelming amount of people okay yeah so like if you're, if you're if you want to get even remotely close to see a band you're literally surrounded like by peep by thousands of people so i was starting to get like anxiety so i went to that little called og or the chronic candy uh -huh. and i got like three lollipops now is marijuana legal in no illinois no but cbd is pretty much legal everywhere Right. The cannabinoid CBD. Right. Yes. Which does all the things that I think are great about weed without getting the psychoactive effects of it. Yeah. So the the calming of it sucked on the lollipop and like Dinah had one too. And we got halfway through. I was like, I feel great. She's like, yeah. Like I'm not because she gets real anxious about being around people. So mm -hmm. It was nice. So it's, I think maybe that's why they have those there. It's for like, you go and freak out. A lot of fuck people <laughs> just suck on this lollipop. Yeah. Right? But they were Take selling the them. Edge off. What was weird what is... They sold lollipops. They sold gummy bears. Then they sold pipes with, they look like buds, mm -hmm. but they're like candy. Now, why would you sell a pipe? You can't smoke candy. It's that pipe candy. It's like from Pootie Tang, you know, <laughs> talk about the kind of candy that goes in a pipe. <laughs> Uh, why would what, what are your thoughts on that i think well, they're also selling one hitters so i'm wondering if maybe they're like hey here's some cbd by the way uh, i know you can bring a pipe in here because they're gonna take that at the door you want to buy a pipe so okay so they were selling these inside the festival yeah that's incredible yeah that's great well there's also dudes selling bongs at the festival too <laughs> i have ex i have tried some of the cbd oil mm -hmm. um for the very same thing for anxiety um it's supposed to help sleep help you mm -hmm. sleep um so we'll see how that goes. I'm kind of just started getting in this like regimen of using mm -hmm. it uh, under the tongue, but I ha I can't as really prescribed. as prescribed. Mm -hmm. I I can't really report on it yet because mm -hmm. I don't feel like I feel like I I need to build it up sure. in me. But I'm interested to see where it goes. But I can tell that it definitely helps curb a little anxiety. Yeah. It's just a it's weird. It's just like a mood enhancer. Like yeah. it doesn't make you high. It's completely legal. It's good for you. Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't expecting anything crazy, but I really feel like it has kind of curbed a little bit of the social anxiety that I have. Mm -hmm. Like, cause I don't like crowds. I don't really like talking to a lot of people at the same time. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I kind of like my one-on-one -on -one time with my friends and stuff All like right. that. And, uh, it did, it did make me kind of feel like that was lifted a little bit. Yeah. Like you know? you're cool where you're at. Yeah. Yeah. And that's so, man, it's something I battle every single day is truly being in the moment. Mm-hmm. Versus thinking about what I'm going to be doing next. Yeah. Well, sometimes being in the moment leads to uh, something else that happened at Riot Fest. There was another secret show. We went to this bar called G-Man. We went there after the last night. And then they opened up another side of the bar and did like this free secret acoustic show with the dude from Menzingers. So we go back there and uh, hanging out. Diana loves Menzingers. I'm whatever about it. So I go back to get another beer. And then Diana just comes over back and she's like, am I invisible? Like, as we start talking about like the older you get, like you start thinking more about what's your place. Mm -hmm. Like, so we're at a punk rock festival. When you grow up and that's your life, like it kind of is your life. Like you make music and going to shows and all that kind of thing, your life. Right. Uh, when you get older and that's no longer the case, then you kind of have to figure out like, well, what am I? Like, who are you? What really matters to you? I mean, that still matters in a way, but it's not your every day. Right. Because it used to be like, all I did was play music and live to play music. Yeah. And I was in that camp too, 
And I would always think to myself like, oh man, I'm never going to dad out. Mm-hmm. I'm never going to lose the fire. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I'm not going to be, I'm not, I'm going to be the exception. Cause you start seeing people do that. Like yep. older friends, like man, it's fucking dead. Or friend, sold all of his shit. Or friends your age. Yeah. Why would you sell all of your stuff? Oh, because it's just sitting there and you don't need it. Cause you're not playing shows. Selling the van. Selling the just van. Just selling the van. <laughs> but <laughs> buying the van. Dude, it's a really small window. It's it, probably like 10 years. Yes. Of like buying the van and selling yeah, the van. But boy, what a ride. Oh. The story of boys. But boy, I like it. A... Um, but yeah, I, I used to think that way too. I was like, man, I'm going to, I'm young at heart. Like mm-hmm. I'm, oh, this is what happened. Like, all right. Like first it was like, all right, I'm 17. I'm 18 years old. I'm playing in this band. I'm having fun. I want to get signed. I want to tour. I'm ready to do this shit. Mm-hmm. And your twenties creep in and you're like, all right, you know what? I may be 24, but I'm still going to do this. I got a good day job, mm-hmm. but I'm still going to do this. And we're going to practice three times a week. We might go on tour with our vacation time. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. Then you fast forward. Okay. I'm 29. I'm not 30 yet. <laughs> I still got time. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. You keep going on. Uh-huh. Then you're like, all right, I'm in my thirties, but you know what? At least I'm not 40 yet. I'm going to do this for like 10 more years yeah. at least. Then I hit 34 mm-hmm. and I was just like, eat. I slammed on the brakes. Mm-hmm. I was just like, I don't know if I can devote my time to being in a band anymore. I love playing music. I love the brotherhood of the people I'm playing with. I get along with everybody. Great. But should I be doing this? Mm-hmm. Like the gas gauge is going down in the van. Yeah. Yeah rapidly yeah and i'm just like and the mileage is going the up. mileage is going uh-huh. way up yeah and i'm like whoa i'm human this is finite mm-hmm. i better start doing some shit that really matters mm-hmm. or you know not that being in a band doesn't matter but like really matters to like your future sure. you know and like or family matters to your own or personal well-being personal like, yeah. per- perfect way to put it personal well-being uh Cause like, yeah, you know, when you're like 18, 19, like I said, that's, that's all that matters to it's you. It's your life. Like it literally was my life. I, I would work a job, uh, any job to be able to put gas in my car, buy whatever shitty gear I have or strings for whatever shitty guitar I had and to play in a band. That's all I wanted to do. Yep. And if one day, one day it's going to happen. Never did. And it never will. And I think it was, I was probably in my twenties when I realized that like, yeah, it's just not going to happen. I had a really good talk with Aaron uh, Pierce mm-hmm. at work and we were talking about this very thing and we, we weren't talking about our own stories, but we were just talking about life. Mm-hmm. And if I can look back and say something about my past and I'll be brutally honest, like I think I was doing it for partially the wrong reasons. I think I was doing it because I wanted to get somewhere with it rather than doing it because it was my favorite thing to do. Yeah. Like it was like I almost in some weird way viewed it more like work yeah. than fun. And not I'm not saying that that is directly related to not being successful, mm-hmm. you know, whatever successful means to you. Right. But I think and I don't think I was completely doing it for the wrong reasons, but I think that those wrong reasons weighed a little more than the right reasons. But did. here's the thing, though. You have to have you have to have both of those things. Yeah. You can't just be all heart and be I like, so we're so good. I just, I just love playing with you guys. And eventually, if we just put our passion into it, man, someone's going to sign us. But no, you have to also have a business mind of it. Like, I want this band to be here in five years. Yeah. If the band is not here in five years. We need to rethink even being in this band. You know what I mean? Totally. I can see both parts of that, but I wasn't even ever that good at guitar mm-hmm. or singing. A lot of and people aren't. And I did aren't. both of those in a yeah. band for a while. And it was just weird to me. Like, I'm finding so much joy now that I just have my little space in my house mm-hmm. where I just sit down with my guitar and a couple of pedals or the synth or a drum machine or something and just make little fun stuff. Yeah. Like whether it's production for the podcast or just something I'm never going to show anybody or just mm-hmm. show you, you know, I have so much fun doing that. But for the longest time, I would say from like 28 on, uh, being in a band just gave me a lot of anxiety. Mm-hmm. Like when I was doing purple church, super anxious at every show. Like it wasn't really that fun. Yeah. Uh, I did it and I had fun, right. but like leading up to it was like, I would just be anxious. I'd be anxious. Dude, when you go to record a song or a record mm-hmm. or an EP, so anxious, 
Like I have to play this perfect. Yeah. But the problem is, is I never put the time and the effort into getting better at guitar. So I wouldn't have that anxiety come, yeah. come time for me to record my guitar. See, parts. That, that took me forever to really do. Cause I guess in a way I was, I was internally cocky, but not like how most people are. Right. Like I didn't think I was, I didn't portray myself as being good, but I thought I'm good enough at what I do, I can get by with what I do. And I thought, man, I write really good songs. Right. And then, like, you listen to like, no, that song fucking sucked. <laughs> like, right. And then like, oh, I think I'm a pretty good guitar player. And then you start seeing like Aaron Pierce, like Ugh. when I was his age, I fucking sucked at guitar. Yeah. And I've been playing for like seven years by that point. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, dude, I've been playing for, at this point in my life, I've been playing guitar for, tw- oh my God, over 20 years. Mm-hmm. And I'm not good. <laughs> like yeah. I'm, I'm happy. I'm comfortable yeah. with my level. I can make. Hey, I can write good songs. But do you find <laughs> yourself? Do you find yourself like learning new things and like? No, I don't want to. Yeah. I plateaued. I started playing <laughs> guitar at 14 or 15. I plateaued at 18. So you gave up on even learning. See, my th- my thing is that I'm not like out searching. I I, I want to get better. I want to learn to play this scale. Blah blah blah. I will like. be listen to a song. Like man, it'd be cool to learn how to play that song. And then I'll just put it on Spotify and I'll bring up tabs and if i don't get it after like two plays of the song i'm like fuck it but most of the time i'll just get it because i learned to play by ear yeah it's so like, that's this wasn't meant to be played. yeah this was not this is <laughs> this was not for me like in high school i loved the band the living end mm-hmm. chris cheney's a hell of a fucking guitar player does the brian setzer thing mm-hmm. it's like i'm gonna learn these fucking songs no how'd that go did not go well <laughs> did not go well and i'm still to this day like okay if i can just learn this solo if i can play the prisoner of society solo I'll be fine. Mm-hmm. That's all I need. No, because if I can do that, I can do lots of other stuff. Nope. I get halfway through it. Like, do you ever see those YouTube videos where it shows you how to play a solo slow, or like slows it down? Yeah. So I do them like, oh, I got this. Now play it at normal speed. No, no. Nope. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> like I watch somebody like Aaron, our friend mm-hmm. at work, watch him play guitar. And I just sit there in awe, like a dog that hears <laughs> yeah, a high pitched like, sound. How like, hmm? how are you doing that? And I'm just like, you know, I will never be able to move my fingers like that yeah like even if i practiced every day yeah. i'm just not that agile my, i have fat fingers mm-hmm. i have short hands short hands i have short I have hands, short hands. <laughs> I have t-rex hands they, they don't go out very far uh but yeah i, I just don't have the dex the dexterity yeah, yeah. the manual dexterity well when he played refuse new noise for a keely video and he's playing and i'm like that's not how you play that he goes no it's actually how you play it's that you want that open note there i'm like I've been doing it wrong my whole fucking life. Yeah. I thought I was playing that thing. And I would like, that's what I play with like, friends. Like, check it out. New noise. Like, no, he's playing it wrong for fucking ever. <laughs> this <laughs> dad, years, yeah. his fucking dad is playing it wrong. Yeah. So back to Riot Fest. Mm-hmm. Did you feel at any point in your trip that you had enough? Like, mm. not, not, not like I've had enough, but like, like, okay, I've had enough. Kind of ready to go home. Oh, every day. The first day? Like I said, we left early the first day because we were tired Uh because we we went went through the list of, okay, well, New Order's playing later, Ministry's playing later, Nine Inch Nails is playing later. Do we really want to see all these bands? Or are we just night at the Riot Fest? Or do we just want to, and that's another thing too, do we just want to be able to say that we saw those bands? Like admitting like, I would love to see them, but I'd also love to go home, Mm -hmm. eat a good dinner, Mm -hmm. take a shower, clean up because I'm already sweaty as Mm -hmm. fuck. So we decided to be honest with ourselves and say, nah, let's just go. Second day, we show up early because the first band, Dino wanted to see, was at noon. And we stayed all day. Although, just starting to cross off bands like, eh, let's just go sit in the shade for this one. Sit this one out. We sit this one out <laughs> until you like find the band like, okay, gotta, gotta see this one and gotta see this one. But a lot, most of the time was spent sitting in the shade, eating nachos or taco in a bag or whatever mm-hmm. and then yeah drinking overpriced beers like nine dollars for a heineken eat a, eat a dick so you're saying so you're saying cap capin is it capin jazz it's like C-A-P, yeah. crunch? c-a-p apostrophe n jazz wait yeah. is it capin crunch or is it captain crunch it's capin crunch but i always said captain crunch growing up well yeah because he's a fucking captain but this is cap and jazz. This is cap and jazz. Is yeah. it like cap, like your like your fedora, or like your cocksucker now, cap see, and I jazz? Think, I think it's Captain Jazz. That's what I thought. But they're calling it cap and cap and jazz, like Captain Crunch. R- okay. Or it could be. See, that's something to learn. Yeah, it's it's a weird band. A lot of jazz players wear hats. 
They do. A lot of these, a lot, a lot, a lot of fedoras. A lot of CSCs. Uh, a <laughs> lot of those. Yeah. Uh, cap and jazz. Yeah, that was the or, highlight. Or is he capping it? Like, is he capping it off? I'm like, capping jazz. Yep, I'm capping it off. That's Bottling, I'm, I'm, because jazz is just chaotic. Yeah. You bottle it. You can't bottle it. You're capping it. You're putting a lid on it. Putting a, put a lid on it. <laughs> so that, that was your hands down hands highlight. Hands down highlight. Any others? Did you watch Jawbreaker? I did watch Jawbreaker. How was that? It was great. Um, they sounded fantastic. Uh, but that that's funny too. Uh, Blake Schwarzenbach posted something that he had forgotten how to play Jawbreaker songs, so he went online and had to look up Jawbreaker tabs to remember his songs. That's awesome because they haven't played together in since like nineteen ninety eight, ninety nine, or something like that. That's a long time. Yeah, a long time. I'd forget them too, right? Yeah. I have a love hate. No, let me backtrack. I wouldn't say a love hate relationship. I have mixed feelings on Jawbreaker. I have a lot of friends that really like them. Yeah. They never hooked me, which is weird because mm-hmm. I do like a lot of music that sounds like Jawbreaker. Yeah. Or might be influenced by Jawbreaker. Sure. But just they never hooked me. Yeah. Now I know they're a great band. I know mm-hmm. they're this like legendary band. Iconic band. Iconic yeah, yeah. is a great word. But I saw some video from Riot Fest, their performance. Mm-hmm. And this is just my personal opinion. This is my two cents. All right. Listen. Are we in your corner? <laughs> Do your two cents? Yes. This is the rant. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thought it kind of sounded like shit. I thought it sounded shitty. And I know that's kind of their thing was mm-hmm. like, he's a little dissonant when he sings well, and the, the guitar problem. parts are weird. I, Dear You gets a lot of flack for people being like, that's their sellout album. I think Dear You is their best fucking record because it sounds the best. Okay. Their song structure, their songwriting is the best. I think Bivouac and Unfun, there's some decent songs on there. But as a whole, those albums are kind of shitty records, like, and they were meant to be shitty. However, the shit he did after Jawbreaker, like, you know, the guy can write songs and right. play well. I mean, Just Brazil was great stuff, incredible, yeah. incredible stuff. Uh, so yeah, I think when there it sounded okay. I don't think it really translated well over like iPhone video. Okay, you know what I mean. And and not to shit on somebody else's joy because like if if somebody likes them mm-hmm. i'm sure it's amazing to see much like me talking about at the drive-in yeah. i would but, love to have I mean, seen that he's 50 now yeah you know? they're older yeah they're like old cats at this point like when point. they stopped the band they were in their like 20s okay but that was like 20 years ago right yeah i mean they, they stopped being a band in like 96 or something like right after dear you came out they just like said Done. that's crazy so yeah that's like 21 years ago so you stayed for jawbreaker yeah. were they closing out they were the, the last band of riot fest yeah and I spent that set standing and doing that, keep holding holding you back, uh-huh. like uh, stretching. I think I sat down for a couple of songs, like in the <laughs> middle of this pit. I just imagine you like holding a couple fingers up in the air, like, all right, I'm out. All right. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, got it. I tried. Just going down. I tried. Next to a tree. Well, it was it was dark by then, so oh, yeah, was shade dark, wasn't. Yeah. Uh, shade was not necessary. Yeah, yeah. I was covered in it. Right. Yes. Was covered in shade. Everybody was. Everyone Everything was. was. Covered in shade. Yeah. So... That was the night three. Yeah. Last end of band it. of the whole thing. Last band of it on Sunday night. And then we uh, left there. And did, now did you did you leave the next morning to come back? We left. Well, that's the thing. Our flight out. Another cool thing about Spirit is they don't. Their schedules are so fucking wonky. Uh, I could either have flown out at 6 a.m., which who the fuck wants to do that? Mm-hmm. Or 8.35 p.m. Mm-hmm. Check out of the Airbnb at noon. Do the math. That's you have eight, eight hours. Eight and a half so hours. So we decided, fuck it. We're in Chicago. Let's just do the touristy Chicago shit. Okay. For eight something. hours. For eight hours. <laughs> for a full work day. We jumped. Yeah. We jumped on the L and uh, had some lunch. We went and saw that giant chrome kidney bean. What'd you think? Thoughts? Takeaway? What? Why? My, my thought was, really? This, I think I said that to Diana. I'm going go, that's it? That's it? I think I would have done like the Larry David like. Eh. Yeah, exactly. Eh. No, I I did that. And Diana goes, you take a picture, and I go, eh. yeah. Eh, why? Eh. Yeah. And cool. Then we, we walk down to Navy Pier, and we get all the way down to it, and there's like a shit ton of people. I'm like, why are we here? It's like I thought you wanted to go. I'm like, I thought you wanted to go. We're like, man, fuck it. So we turned around and walked to the Shake Shack, got some burgers. All right. And then uh, what else did we? Do? Having a day. Oh, we walked. We took the train to Fireside Bowl. Took a picture outside of Fireside Bowl. I wanted to do more. I'm the, I'm a kind of it's weird. I'm kind of embarrassed to say it. I'm I really like filming locations. Mm-hmm. Like I like the show Shameless. Okay, it's based in Chicago. Uh, a lot of it's filmed in Chicago. We ate at a diner that's based. That's the uh, the diner that's of the. It's in the show. 
uh, and it's like, I want to go to the Gallagher house. She's like, we're not going to do that. Someone lives there. I'm like, yeah, but it'd be cool. It's right down the street. The Gallagher house? The name of the family is the Gallaghers, and they live in this house, and blah, blah, blah. I know it's fucking ridiculous. But a lot of John Hughes movies are shot in Chicago, too, and I wanted to do, like, a John Hughes tour, and that's what we should have done on Monday, which just go to, like, the high school of where, you know, all the John Hughes movies are shot. Yeah. Which would have been neat. That's that's a fun thing. That's a fun thing to do. But next time we're going to do but that's a dad thing to do. I realized, like, that's my dad thing, like. I want to go see, and then I was like, High Fidelity was based in Chicago. It'd be cool to see where, you know, Vintage Vinyl was and all that. I imagine you in, in like 20 years walking across uh, Abbey Road, like, but it's like really bad. And yeah. it's, like, it's like Michael Scott, like walking across yeah, Abbey Road. But like, but it's a busy street and no one's <laughs> stopping, but I'm trying to like, I take my shoes off. Like, <laughs> no, I'm definitely, it's, it's, it's cheesy and it's ridiculous, but I, it's my, I like it your jam i just like seeing shit like oh that was cool like we we were changing trains and the, we had to go up this little thing this uh, stairwell to go to the next train and i stopped in the middle of the street and i'm looking around i'm like oh diana this is the scene in dark knight where he crashes the car and he's like it's like what I'm like dark knight where he, they got that other guy and then he crashes the car so the, the joker doesn't kill him like it's right here this is where that scene was She's like so I'm like, mm. i thought it was cool hey it's, it's neat it's neat that's your joy oh i saw a dead body really yeah that's not joyous uh no. what how we get off a train and like someone like with like everyone you know they got their flak jackets and their little walkie talkies like oh, like mounted on the shoulder yeah and they're yeah. like go around go around like super serious face going i'm like okay maybe i don't know what's going on crowd of people and we're walking and i could see a gap in the crowd and i make the mistake of looking to my left and on the ground it's a body covered in blood. Oh, my God. And I just look straight and I go downstairs and I look at Diane. I'm like, I think I just saw a fucking body on the side of the train. How did that make you feel? Existential as fuck. I'm sure. Like, it's not every day you see a dead body covered in blood. Covered in no blood. No less. Now, we get down the stairs and at the bottom of the thing, we see a film crew. So, I'm on my mind, I'm going, it was just a dummy. They're filming something. <laughs> right. But I didn't see any cameras up there. But I'm still saying it was a film crew, just so I'm not freaking out about it. Because that shit's, I don't know, death is a weird thing. Yeah. Lie to me. Lie, lie to me. myself. Lie to me. lie to me. Isn't that what we're doing? Isn't that what that festival is? Is lie to me. I'm young. No, you're not. You're 35. Come watch these bands that you want to see. You think so? I think. Were you festi- picking up some of those vibes there? I was picking up some. I got some mortality vibes there. Like, you know, maybe this is, might be the last festival I go to. Well, when you got back, mm-hmm. we, we, we were going on a walk one day, mm-hmm. you and I talking and you kind of mentioned like i think you were having like some existential moments like yes, what was I, it triggered by Riot yeah Fest? i think yeah yeah I, it got a little dark tell me about it dark. Yeah. remember because i was like i kind of want to talk about it on the show well you know my thing is what's the point of it all i mean i think i said something like i i do not think suicide is smart i don't think it's cool to do but I understand it. I understand if, if you want to, if you're playing a shitty video game and you don't want to play that game anymore and you see no options for that game ever getting good, turn the game off. I'm not saying go kill yourself. But then Dylan said something like, but yeah, man, like, but in games now, like World of Warcraft and all these like other games, you can just go on side adventures till the cows come home. It's like, so just pick another adventure. It's like, who says you have to stay at your fucking job? Quit your fucking job. Who says you have to stay in your relationship? Get out of your relationship whatever's making you miserable get the fuck out of it yeah there's no such thing as a career anymore i think that's gone i think the the concept of a classic work somewhere for 30 years get a gold star or a pen at the end of the whatever a gold star (laughs) after 30 years of service mildred you get this sticker a gold sticker you get a sticker that was actually on the floor with the adhesive side up so i saved it before it was ruined (laughs) good job like I think you meant a gold watch, yeah, right? Gold okay. watch. Or the pink Cadillac. Or gold pendant, something the that pink marks Mary Kay Cadillac. Yeah, it it marks you did you done did good. Yeah. You can retire. That shit does not exist anymore. I think it does, but I think it's not as broad. I think there are still careers out there, but it's not what it used to be. I, I don't know, man. I mean, a lot of people getting laid off left and right. Trump's That's America. True. You know? I know. I know. Like my We're da- making it great. Diana's dad had been at his job for over 20 years, but couldn't retire yet. And they got bought out by another company and they just started laying off people left and right. Yeah. Or doing the thing where they make you quit. They give you shittier work until you eventually quit so you don't get your right your uh, benefits. Mm-hmm. 
So think about that. I'm like, fuck. I mean, where we work, I mean, I can't retire from building pedals. You know what I mean? You can't? I don't know. I don't know if I can. You got 401k? No. I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, guy that doesn't take his own advice. But see, the thing I think about it too. No, no. I find myself, I'll, I'll, I will have conversations with people like dads or old people who, who they have their shit together and they're talking about like, you know, their savings account and what they, what they invest in. Like, oh yeah, totally, totally, totally. I'm like, so... So what do you invest in? Because I don't do any of that. Like my savings account has like a few hundred dollars in it right now. Because you know you use it for vacations or whatever. Like it, there's two parts of my mind. One is, of course, savings account is smart. It's buying a home. It's an investment. It's smart. And there's another side of me going, yeah, but owning a house also sucks. You can drain a shit ton of money. You can go in debt owning a home. Uh, savings. What if you die tomorrow? I think about that all the time. You know what I mean? So okay. live in, do I live in the moment? Do I truly live in the moment? Because that's the thing. They always tell you, like, just live in the moment. Live in the now. Well, living in the now means not planning for a future. It right. means living your day to day. Well, I think the key is to strike a balance between the two mm-hmm. and not be too attached to one. True. Like, I'm, a, I'm a comfort creature, a creature of comfort. A comfort creature. Like you, earlier you said, you know. Life is short. If you don't like your job, get a different job. Mm-hmm. If you don't like your relationship, get out of the relationship. If you like your relationship more, get deeper in your relationship. Yes. But I'll tell you this. Being recently divorced, that like shook me. Mm-hmm. Like I, I handled everything really well and no hard feelings and it was all very... Was was like a who am I moment? It, it was more on that level, yeah. yeah. Rather than like, like... The divorce wasn't that hard. Right. Like we were very good to each other throughout it. We respect each other, you know, very amicable. Remained friends. Yes. Friendly. Friendly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We weren't like hanging out all the time, but we're friendly, you know, whatever. I send her something on Instagram every now and Mm -hmm. then. Uh, But the shakeup of my day to day life, just dealing with the absence of a body in my home, a Mm -hmm. person that I was used to being around for years and years. Yeah. That's what made me wonder, what does this all mean? Yeah. Cause I had, I didn't see that coming. I didn't see it going. And now my life got flipped, turned upside down. And I'd like to take a minute <laughs> to sit right there. So just sit right there. No, it, it, it shook me. Yeah. Like emotionally I was fine with everything going on, mm-hmm. but I think it was the, the rocking of the boat that really made me think about like, what am I doing? Mm-hmm. Like I'm 36, I'm divorced. I have a house. Thankfully, I have a roommate. We had a roommate, you know, mm-hmm. and then Adam's girlfriend ended up moving in. So financially, I'm fine. Right. You know, I have a good job. I have good friends. I have hobbies. But existentially, on the other yeah. hand, like, what is that? Dude, you know? right. But I think about that when it comes to like savings and mm-hmm. stuff. Like, you know, I have a little savings account myself and I am a homeowner, but it's like, Every once in a while, I have these reality checks where I'm just like, what am I doing? Do I have to have this money put back? Mm -hmm. Do I have to own a home? I might. Man, it's it's hard for me to admit this. And maybe this might make me sound crazy. But recently, I've been thinking, I might be happy in a dope apartment somewhere. And now, I'm not talking about a fucking (laughs) shit-ass apartment complex that I grew up in. But like a dope apartment somewhere. I have, I've been thinking the same fucking thing and I've been trying to convince Diana of it. We have three animals. So it's like, that's tough. It's tough. Now I said, here's the, re- okay, here's a little mortality. My dogs are going to die. Charlie's going to die probably soon. I mean, he's old. He's an old dog. I've, I've never had to witness an, a pet's death. They all go to heaven though. Dogs. That's fucked. I never thought about that. I've never witnessed a pet die. Oh boy! I've had pets die. You remember my dog uh, Fido? Yes. Didn't get. Didn't have to witness his death. Why not? Did you uh, leave him with mom and dad? No, my my, uh, my nephew or second cousins wanted to like take care of him when I left because I moved out. Mm-hmm. Like, sure, take care of him. It's cool. He's he's a good dog. And you know, when I'm like 21, mm-hmm. I get a phone call. Fido died. I'm like, oh, that sucks. Bummer. Who but, called you, Ronald Reagan? <laughs> well, if Fido died. Well, Fido died. He was a good dog. Well, that's all. That's all. He just has to say well all the time. Thanks, President Reagan. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> well, come. <laughs> no, but that's the thing. Like, I'm going to have to deal with disposing of my Who dog's body. Who wants to body. bury a fucking dog? Yeah. I have a dog that I love more than any animal I've One ever loved. One day you're going to bury that dog. 
And how do I do it? Because I'm cheap. Is it going to be like... <laughs> Put in a box in the backyard? Hefty bag in a, in a Vans, checkered Vans box? Or is it going to be like, do I make a wooden box? Side note. Do I cremate of, her? Speaking of, saw a lot of checkered Vans at the uh, festival and my mind was going, you're 46 years old. <laughs> Tommy, grab your skateboard and your, and your baba and let's go to the punk rock show. Like, ah, uh, checkered Vans on an adult. <laughs> skateboard and a baba. But no, okay, the pet thing. I guess I did bury a pet, but I was too young to even know what death was. Uh, or we had a cat and it had a litter and the majority of the kittens died. So my dad ate them. <laughs> thought about it. My dad took a fucking hefty garbage bag and just literally just scooped them dead kittens in a bag. Oh my God. And then buries a hole in the backyard and just buries these kittens. In the bag. In the bag. Did he do the thing when you pull the trash can out of the trash or when you pull the trash bag out of the trash, you take it to the curb, you spit it. Did he spin the dead kittens? <laughs> I, you know, I think he may have. <laughs> oh, my God. Could there be anything more sad? How cute is a newborn baby kitten? A, a one that's alive. Yeah. How cute is that? And then just scoop, just scoop them in there. Just scooping them up in front of your kids. <laughs> and just spinning it. <laughs> throw it in the ground like Toss doing the like dirt. throwing it over the shoulder <laughs> yeah. like the kids take out the trash in the movies you know like <laughs> woo, and then it lands in the trash can the lid closes perfectly but it's dead cats oh my fresh dead cats fresh dead cats none fresher none fresh oh my god yeah i've had to i've went to a few dog funerals in my day yeah. which is like the family lines up in a row like the amish says some words they say their respects yeah. i'm over there crying mm -hmm. oh Fish funerals, been to a few of those. I just dump that. Dump that shit in the shitter. And <laughs> Bur <laughs> a burial by sea. Through a shitter. How many times you flushed a fish? A couple times. I flushed a live fish once because I was tired of it. I was like, fuck <laughs> you. It was a shitty goldfish that wouldn't die. I was like 10. You're supposed to die weeks ago. I was uh, around 10 years old. This fucking fish. I hated it. I hated changing the water, getting him out of the water, letting the water get to so room temp. You murdered a I'm fish? Mur I'm a goldfish murderer. <sighs> it may have survived. Yeah. I mean, it went to the sewers and lived with the Ninja Turtles, became a hero, right? Sure. That's what I told myself yeah. as a kid. I was like, you're going to meet Leonardo. Then see? I'm actually just killing Peace. you. Like oh we tell gosh. each other when we die, you're going to go see Jesus. Well, he doesn't exist. <laughs> so back to the mortality thing. Yeah, yeah. I think about that all the time, man. And it's this weird like balancing act that i have back and forth i feel like like sometimes yeah. i feel like i'm really in tune with this like totally with this uh existential side of myself mm -hmm. and then there's times where i'm like no no i'm not gonna believe it and i'm just gonna like turn my back to it and run no, away from mine it. is mine is like i start i feel real eckhart tolle and i'm in it i'm in the, i'm in the now i'm in the zone i get i understand everything we are all nothing and nothing is everything yeah and the next one i'm like i don't want to die I don't want to. I what? What if she dies first? What's my life going to be like? Yeah. Anytime I see someone who has a partner who okay, I watched Wonder Woman last night. Uh, so spoiler alert: dickhead dies, and she goes to his picture and like touches it and starts getting teary eyed. And Diana's over there getting teary eyed, and I'm just like, she got to do that to me one like you know what I mean? Like I I, I you don't know wanna... she's gonna outlive you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Do you think about that? Yeah. Like, I, I used to lay in bed and think about that. Like, I'm dying first. I know it. Who's she going to fuck when I'm dead? Uh, who cares? <laughs> yeah, I'm dead. I'm like, dead. <laughs> I, could, I could care less. But that's the thing. It's like, it's, it's, it's lights out, man. Yeah. Like, it, it's, it's, a, we keep getting back to that. But isn't that all the more reason to truly live in the now and exactly. appreciate it? And if I want to appreciate, put me out to pasture in a nice apartment with great Wi Fi. That's all I want. Okay. That, okay. My Wi Fi here sucks. Yeah. It sucks. They keep putting up these badass apartments everywhere. I'm like, man. And I'll look them up. I'm like, rent's like not even as much as I'm paying for this house. Although there's more space. There's a yard. I could put all my gear in this house. You're a gearman. Do I get a storage unit? But I would like to get like, I've always wanted, Dinah has the same thing. And it's probably because we're children of the 80s and 90s. The corn. The pine. Uh, <laughs> the loft apartment from the movie Big. Oh, if you if you classic up, classic cool apartment. Everyone wants that apartment, and my thought is one fucking day I'm living in that goddamn apartment because I can. I don't care if it's in Oklahoma City. I don't care if it's Chicago. I don't care if it's Sheboygan. I don't care if it's in Louisville. I don't care if it's in goddamn Timbuktu. 
I want to live right. in that apartment. And, and I'm going to be an adult and I'm going to have a good job and I'm going to be able to afford it. And guess what? I can do what I want with my money because I earned it and it's mine. <laughs> and it's mine. Okay. It's mine. <laughs> it's mine. I earned it. It's all my. The beauty of a lot of those places too is <laughs> that was the excited Southerner meets <laughs> Donald Trump, I believe. <laughs> yes. Well, well, well. <laughs> wait, that's actually Southerner. <laughs> all right, Ooh. but yeah. I bought a house, yeah. and it took me a while. What well, you were also married? Not I you wasn't were getting, married. But were you planning on getting married? We were not yet engaged when I bought this okay. house, but we'd been together for a while. I thought that personal outside of the marriage, mm -hmm. I thought that personally, this was something I need to do. I need to buy a home. Was this after a lot of conversations with your dad? Yes. Many that ended Rob, in the same way. Rob, you know, a house is a good investment. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, you're just renting, you're just throwing your money away. I'm like, dad. It comes down to, I don't know if there's a God or not. So what, <laughs> what point is it for me to have a house? I'm, I might not have kids. Like, <laughs> That's weird. Not like dad, you know, talking about fiscal financial things about owning and renting. Just like, I don't know if there's a God or not, dad. So what, wait, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah. Like, you know what? I'm willing to take a gamble and say yeah. there isn't. Yeah. So how about I just spend my money and live in a cool apartment yeah. with great Wi-Fi and covered parking? Hey, dad, there's a guy who thinks he's a six year old girl. The world's going crazy. I don't know what the fuck is going on. Yeah. I'm going to spend my money. I'm going to buy a video yeah. game. Who I'm going to buy fidget spinners. I'm going to buy yo-yos. I'm going to buy. Uh, yeah. Oh, the sweet, sweet sound. You know, so just fidgety. buy a bunch of junk you don't need. But that's the thing. Like, I don't do that. I'm not a junk buyer. Right. I buy if I don't buy it unless I truly, truly, truly need it. Talk myself out of several purchases all the time. I talk myself into a lot too. That's true. But I do talk out, talk myself out of them. I think that walking away from something I, you know, cause I know that I'm not the only one that does this, but like I'll, I'll want something mm -hmm. and then I'll make myself feel like I need it. Mm -hmm. And then I obsess over it. Let's say it's that keyboard that you're looking at right there. Yeah. Like, Oh, the Korg mini log. Like, Oh, that's a, that's an all analog synth with real time control. Ooh, it's, it has, it has nice keys, a lot of knobs to twist. I think I need that. A week later. Researching, researching. I need this. I know I need this. Three days later. Reverb. Buy now. Oh, I get paid on Thursday. But you know what? I think I can still get it on Tuesday. I think I'll be all right. I've got groceries. I'm good. Four days later, it's delivered. You have it. All right. Unbox it. Check it out. Like drool on it. Like, oh, this is so fun. Go through all the presets. Oh, I'm going to make so many sounds with this. A week this. later. Sitting on the shelf, collecting <laughs> dust. Busted out for great intro songs every once in a while. How much was that? Um, I think I paid like it was around four hundred bucks. So you got you got your money worth out of it. You got a badass intro out of it. I did. True. True. But see, but I used thing, it on stuff. But at least you're not the kind of guy who goes, "Man, it'd be really cool to make a goofy intro. I want to buy this four hundred dollar keyboard just for that." No. Yeah, I am that guy though too. I don't know. But you look for deal. You're a dealsman. Yeah. yeah. I'm not just gonna go. But I'm not buying. I say this to all my friends. Uh, friends who play instruments and gear and they ask me how do you get all this gear i say never pay full price is that what you say never pay what they're asking never buy new never pay full price dang you do get some good gear what would you do with that gear though let's say you and diana were going to move into an apartment uh-huh you'd either have to find a place to jam oh a no friend's house i already have this set up in my mind let's hear it the gear is going to be part of the place so you can like just put a half stack in a corner somewhere just kind of have it around as like furniture, not furniture, but you know what I mean? Like it's, it's art. Okay. It's not, I don't have shitty gear. It's not like I have like a fucking crate blue voodoo sitting in the corner. Okay. Have some cool shit hanging around, have guitars hanging on the walls, take up your wall space. Okay. That way it's practical and it's also, you know. But you can't play it in an apartment. No. And I've come to terms with the fact of like, I can be a quiet boy. Mm -hmm. Like I can do everything on the computer now mm -hmm. with plugins, whether it's keyboard stuff, drums, sure. guitar, Whatever, you know, maybe have a small amp to record some guitar. Yeah, I, I've seen, th seen things on the internet where bands who live in apartments, they'll get those uh, those like headphone pods mm -hmm. and then you basically could plug your instrument into that, use a DI box or whatever you want to use for your pedals, plug into that and the drummer has like an electronic kit and it, you're playing in headphones. Yeah, you're, you're practicing just hearing in headphones. That's all you hear. You just hear those fucking yeah. drumsticks hitting that plastic but if your headphones are nice, yeah. all you're hearing, you're hearing a really good, solid mix of all you guys. I want to hear one of these mixes because I'm afraid it would sound like shit. shit? Yeah. yeah. It would sound silly. 
Like thin. Yeah. Scoop the mids. But the thing is, is I'm to the point in my life where I'm not jamming anymore. Yeah. I re- I'm in a band. I'm playing a show tonight. I we talk, have not practiced for the show. I talk to you now. Mm-hmm. We could do this anywhere. Yeah. We could do this in an apartment. Yeah. Now, am I going to sell my house, get an apartment? No. But I thought to myself, I was like, man, for as much as I'm paying for this house and like the bills and stuff, I'm mm-hmm. like, I could live in a pretty dope apartment A somewhere. dope apartment. Like a nice apartment. Mm-hmm. Again, not the complex that's off like 240 and Shields. Like not a shithole that I lived in when I was younger, but like no. a dope. Okay. So when we moved into apartment. our apartment, uh, I bought a new couch on Craigslist from this dude. It was like a super nice. He just got it. Total dead. He lives in those lofts. 12th, 12th Avenue lofts, I think it is. On like Robinson. And 12th Broadway. Avenue. Broadway's Broadway, the one that has all the old car lot things on it. Yes. Automobile alley. Yes. So it's right off of there. And I go to get it. And it's this badass fucking loft apartment. Super dope. It's the biggest square footage one they have. And he's we're moving the couch out. I told him, you know, I just got a new house, renting it or whatever. And it's like, if you don't mind me asking, man, how much you because he's moving out mm-hmm. and moving to another loft. It's like, how much is this? He goes, Oh, it's a thousand a month. I'm like, how much are your bills? He's like, oh, bills are included in the building. I'm like, yeah. I'm paying $200 more for a house that's the same square footage. And let's face it. My house is not as cool as that apartment. No. Like it doesn't look as cool. No. It's not historic. I like my house. There's nothing mm-hmm. wrong with my house. I have some nice space here. I, I I dig it. Everything works. It's fine. Yeah. But it's just a boring house in Bethany. Yeah. You know, or that could be anywhere. That could be a boring house in Oklahoma City. Sure. A boring house in Choctaw, Norman, whatever. Edmond. But it's just like, man, maybe I should flip this shit. And get something cool, even mm-hmm. if it was like a condo or yeah. something. I don't I don't know. Maybe some may think I'm crazy for saying this, but like I just don't give a fuck about a yard. And is there yeah. any the bigger question I have is, you know, being my father's son, you know, being from Oklahoma, being from quote unquote, you know, the South or whatever, the country mm-hmm. growing up in Choctaw, I guess is kind of considered Middle America. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, having a yard to my father was everything. Having some space, having a pretty yard. I kind of can't stand having a yard because yeah. I don't like keeping it up. Like, I think I'd be okay with not having a yard. One less thing you have to do. I have a dog, mm-hmm. but my dog is old. I can take her out to shit. She comes back in, she lays down. Most of these badass apartments have dog parks in them. Yep. So, okay, there's that. So, mowing, you have to buy a mower. If you want it to look real nice, you have to buy a weed eater. Maintain those things. Oil, gas. All that shit. String. Storage, strings. <laughs> so if you'd cut that out, you're cutting out a huge monthly budget of your time, energy, and finances. I'm, th- Man, all I'm saying is I've given it a lot of thought lately. Yeah. Uh, will I do anything about it? No, because again, I'm a creature of comfort. Right. I probably don't want to mix it up too mm-hmm. much. But, but I, something to think about. I think it's like the mini log. I think you'll think about it a lot and then you'll do it. You're just like, you know what? I'm going to put it on the market. If, if anybody bites, it's fine. It's like right. putting a piece of gear on the internet. Right. I'll put it up at this price. If someone buys it, that's cool. If not, I'll probably just take it down. Right. Or so, just hang on to and it. And then someone put your, house, you put your house up. Someone buys it and you get excited and then it sells and then closing costs and it's closing and then, and then you move everything out and then you get that apartment and you're super excited. And then three weeks later, you're like, fuck, should I have done that? Should I, I, I think maybe I want to live in a house. Yeah. <laughs> and well, that's the other thing is like, I don't want to miss this place. Yeah. Like, I don't want to make the wrong decision yeah. and then be like, fuck, what was I doing? I had this cool little house in Bethany and yeah. it's like cheap. The literal grass is greener on the other side. Because there is no grass on no. my new side. But that's the thing. You don't have to worry about that. A bunch of dog shit. But you do have to worry about being right next to your neighbors. I will say this, though. Um, I've never encountered neighbors. What well, The Airbnb we stayed at was like one of those super nice apartment buildings. It badass. It was an old school building. They renovated all the rooms. Uh, it was kind of looks like an old hotel. I saw nary a neighbor. The whole three fucking days we were there. We were in and out day and night. Saw nobody. A nice apartment. You're not going to have to worry about noise. And you don't hear anybody. Like yeah. You don't hear anything. Yeah. It's nice. And it had a doorman. It was sweet. A classic doorman. Classic doorman. Was he like dressed as a doorman? Was he wearing uh, his doorman's costume? Here's another part of that. Here's another, another thing that sketched me about. It was fine. It ended up being great. There was a doorman. So we couldn't go through the front because Chicago has Airbnb laws. So technically, this is couldn't be an Airbnb. It totally is. Yeah, but it's not supposed to be. Sounds a little. So we had, to go, we had to go through a side door, 
which is fine. Right by an elevator, took you right up. So yeah, I didn't get to see the doorman, but there is a doorman. That's why I had to go through the side. It's like, there's a doorman. He'll ask what unit you're going to just to avoid any trouble. Just go through the side door. Nice. I'm like, but I want to see that doorman. Yeah. Well, you I want could, a doorman you, to open the door for you me. You could have hit him on the way out. Yeah. Yeah. You should have hit him on the way out. Yep. He ain't going to ask where you're, and he, where you're from. Yeah. He's going to be like, where are you going? And be like, oh, we're going to get something to eat. Um, yeah. See you when we leave next. You when know? we leave again. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you see me come in? I don't know. Cool, man. Well, I'm glad you had a good time yeah. and I had a bunch of shit I wanted to talk about, but I feel like we're kind of getting to the end here. Uh, I, have, I have something I really want to talk about, but we have to wait till next time. What were you going to say? I, I, I'm going to save it. I want to talk about some of our upcoming plans and stuff, but I think, oh, yes. I think we might need to wait yes. one more episode. We'll do one. We'll let it, we'll let it linger. Right. So yeah, if you made it this far in the episode, thank you so much for listening. We have some pretty big news kind of an idea we're going to throw out there next episode. Yeah. So we'll just keep you hanging for just a little bit longer. Uh, until next week. Bye.